Arise, minions, and welcome back to Unmade Gaming. We are here for the first of many one-shots for Void in the pre-season three uh, storytelling that we have for you. Uh, as always, if you like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is by Patreon. Link down below. Also, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. This bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar gets filled, Dot gets to do whatever the hell she wants to just tell. Uh, and two, every single dollar that goes into that bar goes to fill our coffee for uh, our season three goals. We have hit several of the goals. We are pushing our way towards uh, three hour uh, long season three, three hour long episode of season three. We've already unlocked season three. We've unlocked uh, some cosplay. We've unlocked some new art. We're working on some podcast stuff for the show. So if you want to support that, you can uh, tip down below at the donation bar but down there, or you can head over to our Ko-Fi by uh, going to exclamation point season three in chat. That being said, I will turn things over to our master of space and peril and darkness. Dot, take us back into the void. Oh, y'all, I have missed you. I've missed being here. I've missed being in space. Let's just all take like a deep breath. Oh no, I got it a little blurry. Let's all take a deep breath and really just soak in the nothingness that is the void. Um, I'm very- When we exhale, can we scream? Yeah, because nobody's gonna hear you. Cool. Uh, in space. <laughs> it's gonna be great. I know that uh, we've been talking about this. Uh, we've been fundraising as Mike so very quickly like skirted over. Uh, so- Y'all, please. Just have mercy. Huge. <laughs> huge thank you for every little burr that you have given over the last few months to make season three a reality i remember when season two ended we had this moment okay let me take my glasses off before i get i'll get a, in and out of character wow that's much brighter than i thought it was um those are sunglasses y'all <laughs> um when we got done with season two i adore we all sat you around can i just and, say that for a moment <laughs> i'm so bluntly honest i'm sorry i have no shame so we all sat down at the end of season two and said like let's let if we're gonna do season three like let's let's see how bad they want it and y'all you really <laughs> you really want it so uh thank you uh for letting us be here to do this one shot to do the one shots we're gonna do over the next few months leading up to what is gonna be the giant premiere of season three so there's always a link in chat because i've got amazing people there that are making that happen um so yeah thank you just thank you. There's gonna be cosplay. We adore games. you so much. There's gonna be pictures. It's gonna get. It's gonna get hype. My uh, my uh, new Lamara cosplay came in. Not too many secrets, but it's here. Your girl's gonna look great. And I'm so excited. I'm trying really hard to rock white. It's gonna be fine. My pale ass is gonna be fine. Here we I go. I mean, do you think Lamara gets a suntan? Just saying. No, I mean, I guess it. You could, but does she go to like a tanning, a space tanning bed? No. <laughs> you be direct from space. <laughs> Get your hot radiation here. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I could also say <laughs> that it, it really warms our, uh, the depths of our void hearts that y'all yeah. are just as excited about this as we are. <laughs> like we have been in our cast chat nonstop this entire time like it never story. stopped um and the fact that y'all are so excited just as excited as we are it just really it gives us so much life so thank you it's true now i'm hoping that if you're here uh, you've had a chance to catch up if not um it's gonna be real hard for me to give a huge uh recap so instead i'm not i'm just gonna hit on a few important reminders um one uh this is a safe space for you safety tools everybody should know that and two um uh it was a very emotional end to our second season but today's game is taking place nine months from the point of their teammate Sewell's arrest now that arrest was made in uh, uh falsity as uh, Sewell found himself transformed into somebody else who actually had the arrest warrant out for them. But finding that maybe it was time to atone for all the many things that he had done uh, over the years, uh, 
he would accept that arrest as his own. And so Sewell is and has been uh, in a high priority, um, we're going to call it a dumping ground because I don't even know if you can qualify it as a prison, uh, for the last nine months. And the team has been working diligently, putting together a plan, a heist. They have somebody they need to break out of prison. But this is not something that's going to come together overnight. This is definitely not something that they can plot inside a swamp on Kua. This is going to take them a lot, a lot of time. And along with their own personal traumas, uh, there's a lot to be done. As the camera zooms in on Coriolis, that massive space station, circling the planet Kua, green with jungles and now ripe with hard memories. We see the camera pan all the way up its massive spire, starting at the very bottom and working its way up to the higher upper crust end as a ship, the Defiant, so the letters read, begins to dock. Uh, on the exterior, it has strapped to it a fair share of uh, large rocks and material, uh, which I imagine is also uh, matches what's probably inside the vessel as well, uh, its cargo hold, as much as they could carry back. The Defiant is returning from a uh, three-week trip now, uh, out past uh, the kind of protective area of Kua and Coriolis to a ring an asteroid belt that is between here and the planet Zine. Tal, of course, uh, docks this, the vessel uh, at a private dock, or do you go to uh, the net? Do you use the public docks? Well, we have a lot to unload. Um, probably gonna go ahead and head to the net it's just easier, okay. less space to transport through. And frankly, we don't want our patron to be seen with all of her junk. Uh, blah, blah, all of her junk. No, I'm not nervous. You're nervous. Who's nervous here? Not me. <laughs> um, so I say we hit a corruption bar. Uh, so we have started a fresh game. So I'm going to have you draw an icons card. It may not go into play now, okay. uh, but it feels right. I'm also going to draw an icons card for an NPC that's going to spend a lot of time with us today. Just one, right? Yes, just one. Oh, I'm shaking. Oh, I'm out of cards in the deck. Oh, oh. Okay, let me just, hang on, let me recall everything. Um, uh, which one? You're the Traveler. Yes. Okay, um, I'm going to shuffle them all. All right, now draw, try drawing now. You know what? I need my other keyboard. That's going to be better. Okay. Okay, um, that is oh, no, really unfortunate. So I oh, drew. Oh, God, what did I get? Uh, well, I drew for our NPC, which I'll reveal when they actually arrive. Um, but for Tao, what did you draw? You drew, I'm going to play your card on the table. Oh, will it? The mountain. Uh, the mountain. Interesting. Mountain. Hmm. We do have a mountain of junk on my ship, so that's fitting. That's true. Um, okay. The ship going into the net is going to take much longer to dock. You have to wait in line. Uh, it is a massive series of uh, arms and clamps that work robotics that work in uh, tandem to move these vessels basically down a conveyor belt and into the body of Coriolis. Um, it's a self-made parking deck, basically, um, or self-manned parking deck. And so you wait. And you wait. And as the ship goes into what is basically auto at this point, they're going to dock for you. Um, we see Tau at the vessel, put everything kind of into its autopilot mode. And we see you walk down through the ship, a familiar vessel, a room here, a room there. 
Malik's door is closed. Malik has been missing for a little bit. But you knew that might be the case. You see Tamir's room. Door open or closed? Would Tal know? Or would, would you know if Malik would leave his door open or closed? Tamir's door would probably Tamir, be Tamir's closed. closed. Another closed door. I'm guessing Sewell's room. Also closed. The doors also, stay closed on the ship. Also closed. Tal doesn't like open doors. Well, there is one door that always stays open because it doesn't have a door. And yeah. as you, you pass through, you see the chapel now significantly more occupied than it ever has been. Uh, the body of a woman on her knees, um, praying, meditating, some might say, but in their usual state, quiet, deep breaths, you dare not interrupt. And your heavy footsteps walk past. Eventually the ship docks, you get all the right cues and the door opens to uh, the, kind of, the airtight uh, area of the net. Oh, it went down. It's up. Go ahead. Okay, great. Perfect. We're just going to keep going. So they, they, they just missed that. Oh, did they miss part? Did they miss the important, like, first NPC intro? Okay, well, that might have to change. Okay. Uh, well, we'll go We'll go back a little bit. Um, so as Tal One door is down, always open. Yeah, one door is always open. So we see all of these closed doors. Sewell's, of course, closed. Tal's closed. Um, this kind of uh, maybe literal representation of where everybody is at right now. Separated and closed off. But one door on the ship always stays open. The chapel. It doesn't really have a door. It's an archway. And as Tao walks by, it is significantly more, significantly more occupied than it ever has been. Even though Tao would take the occasional times to pray, now there is a new member aboard this vessel. And she's there on her knees in her robes in deep meditation or prayer. And... You see her deep breaths and dare not interrupt whatever is happening. The vessel locks into place and as the door slides open, the excessive noise of Coriolis is like a wave washing over you. You just spent three weeks out in dead space with nobody but you Tamir, and one additional person who spends the majority of their time in meditation. It's a little too much almost. Yeah. It's like coming back, all the people and the noises. Tal still doesn't like it, but it I'm... Is. I have to meet someone. You step off and uh, we probably watch uh, a silent uh, kind of eye contact between you and Tamir as Tamir begins the process of um, communicating with the deckhand uh, here who's going to be ca cataloging, archiving, and then helping you get these massive rocks uh, pulled from space to wherever they need to go. Um, but Tal... Um, your senses never fail you. And even here where there is a lot of footsteps and the sounds of uh, metal being drilled in, um, you get the feeling you there, you're being watched, that there are eyes on you from the moment you step down. Maybe it is just your paranoia, but you could roll an observation if you'd like. Oh yes, I would love to. Ah! I'm sorry, <clears throat> scream. That kind of slipped out there. Oh, ah. <laughs> okay. Observation. Let's... 
Okay. So maybe it's just a gut instinct. You don't see anybody yet. I mean, technically you see a lot of people, but you don't see anyone directly like looking at you or trying to make eye contact with you. So um, maybe it really is just having this many people around. It spooks you uh, a little bit. It usually does. Where is Tao headed as your heavy boots clank on uh, lattice steel? Well, the usual spot going back to the bar. Uh, see, the same one you that? met Sholi? Yeah. That's the one I'm always at. Person head- I know uh, <laughs> will know to find me there. Okay. You head down um, to the cellar. It's a bit of a trek, actually, from uh, the net. Uh, you take a small tran uh, around to the northern, uh, the northeastern uh, side, and you get off, and you take this elevator here, and finally you make it down to the cellar, a place that most people don't uh, clamor uh, to find, especially when there are many other places to drink aboard Coriolis. But uh, this is the one that you always choose. And there it is, this kind of open front cantina, um, a little uh, a small bodega next to it, uh, selling whatever they can get their hands on, especially here in the cellar. Since the events nine months passed, since the rioting, the cellar still stands in even more disarray than it has before. Nobody has cleaned up. There's still graffiti, horrible words written about mystics. I uh, sit up far and say, hey, Rashina. This is Rashina's canteen Mm -hmm. on my notes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Say, hey, Rashina, can I get my usual please? Of course you can, kid. And this kind of, this woman turns around. She's, uh, you know, rough around the edges. Um, And she says, it's good to see you. It's been a while since you and your sisters have come by. Yeah, well, you know, we went mining. Always got to get a drink after. What can I do you for? Uh, It's like in Corruption Bar. (laughs) <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks chat uh, okay. gosh we haven't even got to the good stuff yet we're just <laughs> we're just digging we haven't even met really. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm gonna have to we're just getting until some started good stuff gonna happen okay uh and she says uh well you want it clear you want it dark huh mm, give me a dark one dark uh, and she reaches for an unlabeled bottle um strange neck on this space i don't know what are those things called decanter uh as she pours you a glass and slides it down um you sit for a while and sip this nostalgia probably ro- washes over you the same stool you always sit in the same stool you met Sholi in Sholi, somebody you haven't seen in almost nine months But she's safe, which is the important thing. And you wait and you wait. And that feeling creeps over you again. Yeah, of eyes start, watching you. Uh, Tal is the kind of person who uh, will every minute or two nervously look around at literally every face. Okay, uh, roll another observation. Oh, when I don't have my glasses on, I can't see you. I'm gonna pull chat closer, so I'm not. Oh, <laughs> oh another failure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tal, look, and this fits perfectly with things I've written written about her because Tal is paranoid that literally everyone, everyone. is at her all the time, and she hates it. <laughs> Well, so, <laughs> so you want to just um, take your uh, take your fail your your double and just let it be. Yeah, I'm just going to let it be. She's, uh, you have two corruption bars. I don't need to give you any more darkness points. I know how many darkness points you have. I have eight, in fact, from, uh, for those of you at home that want to prove, there it is. That's the last, let's see if I can get it to clear up. I probably can. That's the last, it. there it is. Um, okie dokie then. I don't so, need to give you any more. Uh, yeah. I, I know that... The person I'm meeting will make themselves known eventually. Now, this person that you're meeting, how did they contact you? 
got a message to me over the comms. We've got okay. the long range comms. Okay. Um, you wait and you wait. Uh, this is the spot. And two drinks in, you start getting that worried feeling like, is she really going to stand me up? Or what if something happened? Yeah. But you know your sister all too well do that a date is a date and as you finish off this final glass taking in the last of the liquid and hit sl kind of uh, uh slamming it down in completion on the bar you see uh through kind of the end of the the glass a figure in a booth across the way in this cantina uh, she is a fiery redhead. Uh, she has some kind of military jacket on uh, and a very, very tight pair of leather pants. Um, her hair is bound back and she wears a... Oh, y'all, I lost my glasses. <laughs> oh, no, they're right in front of me. Oh, my glasses. <laughs> my glasses. <laughs> it's funny because I had to take off my glasses too. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she wears a pair of uh, sunglasses and she kind of makes eyes at you before she slides them up. You may not recognize the face or the hair or this body, but you know those eyes anywhere. Those are Tuma eyes. That is your sister. And she waves a cheeky multiple finger uh, wave at you. I will uh, make eyes at Rashina and just point over there uh, and get up and roll my eyes and head over there. I sit uh, down. Yeah, Rashina kind of clears away the glasses and uh, coughs a little bit. Uh, not sure if you're trying to like pick her up or like what the like deal was, but yeah, she's like, okay. Uh, and she begins wiping a bar. Um, and you sit um, down. Yeah, I, I roll my eyes on the way. I sit down and immediately say, nice hair. I mean, I saw you with red hair and thought I could do that better. Mm. I don't know. I had to copy an original. Anyways. <clears throat> yes, it is a new look. And she kind of pulls her... Uh, this jacket back, this military jacket back that she makes look super cool. And no doubt she took off um, a very defenseless man uh, to show you a very fresh scar. You've seen something similar before and you know, it matches the rest of the scars on her body, except for the fact that it's much pinker and fresh. Uh, she's recently undergone a change. So it's that kind of. I told you a few months ago I'd have to disappear for a while, but I have good news. Mm -hmm. Well, she Come kind on. of hesitates. She's like, I, I have information. I'm sure a lot of it too. Would you like to share? <laughs> I have information that a map exists. A map of the prison that Sewell's being held in. Now, Jalissa or uh, Tao would know that you have all been searching heavily for this kind of information for a while and have had little to no luck finding it over the last nine months. This is kind of like the missing puzzle piece. Well, where is it? That's the tricky part. I need some backup. Me. Well, all right, yeah. Come on, it could be Of course, fun. yeah, okay. Such a party pooper. Plus, you've been on this space for weeks. What you need is to like shake it up a little bit. The good news is it's on Coriolis. Well, that's convenient. All right. I mean, 
nobody else could really do it. So. You cut your hair. Fuck it. Yeah, well, with how fucked up it got after Kua, I figured it was about time to... Oh, you self-cut your hair. <laughs> she just gets up, drops some bird, uh -huh. like, some points, some like chits on the table, um, and uh, uh, she kind of makes eyes at you, and knowing that that one might have cut uh, really, really deep. Uh, Always the did. <laughs> the tea. Um, hang on, let's. I have I have an emote for this <laughs> now. Um, so yes, there it is. Um, and she kind of gets up and she goes, "Come on." All right. All right. And she leads you down through the cellar, uh, around a couple corners, down a very tight alleyway, um, and into spaces that maybe you've never actually explored before. Um, you have this spot, but she knows her way around this place. Um, possibly I try even my yeah. best to remember all the turns. Okay. Try uh, my that best. Is, that, hey, that's great. Cause... I'm actually gonna, let's see. How do I want to do that? This is kind of a role, I feel like. Let's just see how much you remember because you might just have that perfect memory. And this is gonna be, this is probably a survival role or just a wits role. Uh, I have no survival, so I will do wits. <laughs> and I have not great wits. Hey, um, hey, I'm gonna give you a darkness point for that one. Yes, I, I would like to try it. to. I will. I really want to remember my way out of here. <laughs> hey, hey, two much better. Very <laughs> much with that darkness point. Uh, your sister is like darting and turning and taking these these fast corners and shimmying through places. And uh, maybe we hear uh, Tao's exasperated breath, dear icons, as she prays out. And as she does so, you have a moment, and maybe even some of the teachings that a new member of your party has been passing along to you of controlling the mind and the breath and the body. And with a little prayer to the icons, success, and you begin to realize that you're, it's very easy to get in and out of here. She's following a set of symbols. Very discreetly, most would consider just crap graffiti or something some kid scribbled on a wall. Uh, but there is a series of symbols uh, that she is following. Uh, in this case, she is following one that looks similar to a coiled snake. And she weaves and she turns and as she goes to get kind of take a corner, she stops and puts an arm up between you I'm like a metal uh, containment unit. And she says, oh, just let me do the talking, yeah? Be my guest, or I guess I'll be yours. <laughs> she gives you that cheeky look of sister to sister and she rounds a corner and uh, it opens up. You can see that oh. you must be somewhere near where you made the pickup for the weapons all those months ago. You As think. we turn the corner, I put my hand in my pocket and I weave my fingers through my brass knuckles. Just, nice. Just to fit them on there. And we see the fingers just ever slightly wiggle uh, as they slide. It, they perfectly slide into place. Uh, you feel better already. And you're pretty sure that this is somewhere near where you picked up the weapons before, though you have gone through a labyrinth of these containment units here in the cellar of Coriolis and Jalissa uh, kind of tightens up her glasses to hide her eyes a little bit and uh, checks her collar make sure she looks the part uh, and where you stand now is a rather open area as if to all of these containers are to camouflage this one kind of space and there is a woman sitting on a crate that has a large pillow on top of it. She sits uh, crisscross applesauce and uh, she, uh, her robes are dark. They do not stand out with the vibrancy that much of Coriolis carries with it. The bright dyes and uh, the beautiful embroideries often found, especially not here, but upstairs. Um, but hers are 
deeply dyed indigos and black hues, uh, deep crimson red along the edges, and these robes go all the way to the ground, draping over the box in which she sits. There seems to be nobody else here. I follow Jalissa, uh, just a couple steps <laughs> back, back behind her, but not, uh, not like out of reach or anything like that. Um, obviously giving deference to her. Uh, and I just have my hands in my pockets, silent. Uh, I'm going to actually look around because I'm fucking paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> she she walks up and she simply says, uh, she, she keeps her eyes down. She does not make eye contact with the woman who sits behind a veil, actually, a very kind of sh dark, sheer one. Um, and she says, Snake Mother, you see the woman's head lift just a little bit of acknowledgement of her name. Saying it out loud almost ripples the air. I have done as you asked. I have come for my payment. The snake mother, she says, the entrance you seek is deep in the belly of this place, lost. A diseased organ. Good luck. You will find what you seek in the belly of the snake. And she rises from this crate, um, almost in an unnatural way, and steps off backwards. Her uh, legs show her age. She's very old, Tao. And as she steps off the crate, she reaches over with her also very old hands and pries up the lid, taking it and the pillow away. And on the inside of the box now, you can hear it, the sound of a snake. A big one. She simply looks at your sister, who takes a step forward and peers over the crate. She's trying to play it cool, but you know your sister. She hella nervous. Do you do anything? Uh, it's cool to say no. No, I, I think Tal has no fucking clue what's going on right now. Yeah, you, um, she basically dragged you right in the like middle of something. Yeah, and she didn't like, no one has acknowledged her. So she's literally just going to stand there thinking that this is not anything to do with her. She is just here right Great. now okay this is obviously a transaction that they had talked about before okay she is going to she walks over and she kind of looks in the crate and you don't see it from where you are Tal, but you hear it the sound of the snake's body lash out and ping against or like hit the side of this 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 uh, steel crate um it rings out your sister draws back a little bit though she does not move her feet she remains very firm-footed. Um, she pulls her gloves on tighter and she is going to reach in and try to catch the snake by the neck. This is a melee combat um, with a snake. Did it roll? <gasps> she reaches in and it's a failure. You watch as you see it for the first time. She reaches in to grab it and it dodges and nicks her in the shoulder. It lashes out and actually latches onto her. Um, and uh, as she pulls away, it does the same thing. Now its head is above the box and all eyes on her. There is a smile that crosses the face of the woman behind the veil. Um, Jalissa is going to make another attempt at the snake. 
because she has to. Um, under, I was going to say under my breath, uh, I pray for Jalissa. Okay, I am going to roll an additional d6 for your prayer. Hey! Yes! Well <laughs> worth it! Um, uh, she, under your breath, you whisper it. She doesn't hear it, but the traveler does and recognizes uh, where help is needed. Uh, Jalissa grabs her arm. It is bleeding a little bit. You see just a little coming from the jacket. Um, and uh, she, she kind of bobs and weaves. You see the snake with her back and forth and back and forth. And uh, she takes one moment uh, and it goes to rear back and time almost kind of slows itself as the snake makes that reaction uh, to jump forward. And that's all she needs to reach in and grab it by the neck. And she grabs it from behind kind of a, it's scruff and ah, its mouth opens and you see the two huge fangs dripping venom. Um, and Jalissa looks at you, uh, this time uh, she's sweating and she, you can kind of see her eyes over worried over the top of the glasses. She takes a big, big sigh and she puts her hand down the snake's throat. Um, begins to wiggle it down. Now, this snake is the size much larger than her arm, and it consumes it as she reaches deep. You can see the snake is also struggling um, as she reaches as far as her arm will go. And there's a pause. You see her struggling for something. And then she gets what she came for. And she pulls her arm free in one fell swoop from the snake's mouth, tosses it in the crate. Uh, and as it does so, the old woman claps the lid on and in her hand is a small data stick the older woman behind the veil said third corruption bar are you guys kidding me okay. <laughs> um oh god <laughs> uh the woman says uh she says your payment has been received. Leave. Jalissa pockets it, turns and looks at you and gives you those eyes like, let's get the fuck out of here. Um, and uh, she kind of again grabs her arm and you make your way back. Um, when we get a fair distance away, I pull her into an alley and uh, take a look at that. She goes, it's um, not a big deal. It's just, it's just a, a, a flesh wound. Mm, you probably need anti-venom. I will be fine. It's not the first time I've dealt with her before. All right. If you insist, but you should probably at least wrap it up here. And I pull out uh, the the scarf that I definitely should have had on my head and didn't. Um, I pull it out from one of my uh, pockets in my jacket and I wrap it up just um, so that she doesn't start bleeding through everything. Yeah, you see her flinch a little bit. It is swelling and it's turning purple. She definitely has been there she's yeah she's, she's been bitten by there. something venomous um and uh kind of the you can see there's two holes in her jacket and two holes in, matching in her arm um you wrap has up. no idea what to do about venom for the record she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't either know. uh she doesn't either um <laughs> Uh, that was the first corruption bar uh was a venomous snake uh so she um she kind of holds her arm and she lets you wrap it and she slides it back and she says okay we got what we needed come what? on i what do you usually do when that happens? Has it ever bitten you before? No, I've never missed before. Oh. I'm sure it'll okay. be fine. Look. Uh, um, I don't think so. And I will, uh, I say, just, just wait just a second. And I close my eyes and I try to tap into my mystic power. Which one? To communicate with Tamir. Okay. Um, because I remember well when when we were and we were going to Kua, he did a lot of research. He did. He on probably the, the, yeah. got something about 
poisonous snakes because you know okay. jungle <laughs> yeah okay so um the two of you kind of pull off which is basically just a small alley uh, uh like uh area between all of these big stacked containment units um yeah take her to lamar at, oh womp womp oh <laughs> sorry chat well wow, necrotic uh, <laughs> Man, too was, soon it's been nine months hard. that was hard um so good she actually kind of slot her back kind of slides and you can see um her pupils are beginning to dilate uh she's still conscious and she's still talking to you uh, but her pupils are starting to dilate and uh you know to do this you have to take a second um it takes you a moment it's not like hitting a button and you try to clear your mind clear your breath all the things you've been learning and you're gonna roll that mystic ability to see if you tap in here's the thing tamir also has to roll that mystic ability so uh to oh. see if it's successful um oh my God. uh oh God, i'm so nervous Let's see. Okay, oh, so you, uh, you roll first. Let's get Tao's first because she's got to see if the if it. Okay. Uh, no, praying. <laughs> this is praying to the icons. Too important. Uh, this stressful <laughs> sister could be uh, really poisoned here. Yeah, I cannot let her die on me. Oh my god! Oh no. my god! Oh my icons! No. <sighs> uh, and you try and you try, but there is um either too much noise or you're like maybe it even is that just like the sounds and the overwhelmingness of all of this and your sister um may not be doing well and you can't I've seem to get the line the out there's there's nothing okay all right okay um this is it's fine it's fine <sighs> you hear a voice who are you talking to do I recognize the voice? Very much so. Uh, if you peek your head kind of back around to the main thoroughfare, you see a figure uh, that cannot be denied. Uh, the figure of a dancer. She doesn't wear her usual. Uh, the white mask has been cleared away. Um, but it is Jalissa definitely still her. right there? Yeah, Jalissa is like... Um, she's like kind of breathing heavy and, uh, trying to just kind of stay with it. Okay. Um, no one in particular. Uh, these are private roads. My apologies will be going. Do you make yourself known, like, so she can see you? Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, because she obviously hasn't seen me. No, you guys kind of pulled off. She heard you. Mm, and so she's kind okay. of like speaking out loud. If you kind of peer around the corner, you would see her silhouette and you would gotcha. know. Gotcha. She, she has no idea right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll be going. And uh, I kind of try to help Jalissa up. Yeah, she can just come, leave. Uh, she seems to still, right now, she seems to still have uh, her wits about her. Um, <sighs> yeah, she still has her wits about her. Um, you step out and uh, ever clearer now, a beam of light kind of cutting through. Uh, a few of these stacks and it hits her uh, she looks the part uh, and she says oh Tal Tuma and she gestures to your sister who's kind of almost limply hanging there on you don't worry about it none of my business and she kind of gestures uh, making space for you to pass her I will go ahead and attempt to pass through. Yeah, she'll let you. She's going to let you go right by. Um, you know what, though? She is. This this will be fun. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Um. This bitch. This this. <laughs> I thought I had her character sheet made up, but I guess I don't. Um, that's okay. Uh, she must have been using the one from the book. She um. She kind of lets you walk past, and she smells the air. And she's going to make an empathy roll to try to read the moment here um, and figure out what is your deal because she see, she can tell the possibly, possibly tell that you're upset. Um. Okay, well, she only got one. Um, she knows something's up, but she can't quite place it and it's such a minor injury. Um, and But she just kind of sniffed the air as you go by. Um, noting the alcohol and she lets you through and watches you go you hit uh basically follow the signs backwards yeah. and uh your sister looks up and she goes we have to find a terminal we have to uh, get the information off of this card she kind of puts it in your hand as she's kind of like yeah. nodding a little bit um i will put that into one of my more internal pockets um Secure. so that it can't be pickpocketed out of me uh well that sounds that sounded really bad <laughs> i knew what she was saying i slip it in one of the jacket pockets like right. underneath my armpit so that you have to get like in there got you got to get in my jacket <laughs> yep. um okay um shut up <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully audio is still working even if images are frozen okay so so be it. You uh, need to find a terminal. Where do you go? It's a long way back to your ship. Um, I don't know. Uh, I would probably, I don't know. I have no idea where I would go uh, as a player. Uh-huh. I, as a player, I don't know. As a person who okay. lives, who lives or here. has live ara lived around Coriolis, Tal would know yeah. somewhere that what she could potentially go. Yeah, I don't know what my options are. Yeah, so what are my options, Todd? I mean, there's always <laughs> public medical aid, right? Like, so you could go to the, uh, the, san uh, the sanatorium, which has like public medical, it would totally help you. You would know that certain districts are also gonna have like medical stations. Um, much to the way that uh, what Lumara worked in uh, to serve people. So those would be easy access. You could find one nearby. You'd have to leave the cellar, um, but you could find one. Um, you, yeah. I would probably go to um, the nearest medical station, whatever one that would be. Okay. Um, there would be one here in the cellar. It's just kind of janky. Mm, okay, not that one. Okay, so like, you can <laughs> like the next you closest see one. It, you see it with like uh, the I, emblem I, and symbol, and like, you walk mm. past, and it does not look safe or sanitary. Nope, 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 nope. Yep, coughing um, kids. Uh, sick yeah, no, people, uh, probably go like one district, one to two districts up. Uh, yeah, so you hit an elevator to take you out of the cellar. Uh, and up you go and you hit what is uh, kind of the main core, the core um, of Coriolis. People everywhere, um, all over the places they walk through, uh, shopping and moving about and catching trains. Um, and you see it, the medical station on the opposite side. Uh, and you and Jalissa kind of bump through and maneuver through. Um, At this she point, goes, I'm where? practically carrying she, her. She, yeah, exactly. And she's like, where are you? Where are we going? You're this getting medical attention. No, she goes, no, and she tries to fight you a little bit. Um, uh, she's going to fight you a little bit. Uh, fight me, girl. But yeah, she is. She's going to. Um, I don't know if it's a proper melee combat, but she does use, she's going to try to use force to get herself away from you, if that makes sense. This is not her strongest, but. Okay, she fails. She is um, clearly not doing well. She goes to push away. <laughs> you know, her body almost lets loose at this point. You can see she's pale in the face. She's getting red around the eyes. Um, 
I also fail, so maybe she kind of, she starts staggering away from me and she falls a little bit and I catch her. Yeah, and there's a lot of people. She bumps into a few people. It's beginning to kind of- Jalissa, you're going. She goes, we don't have time for this. No, we don't, because if we if we don't take time for this, you're going to die. So come on. Uh, and I'm I'm taking her. Okay, I'm going to have <laughs> you then make a force check to basically drag her. Okay. I fucking <laughs> hell, why? <laughs> okay, you should refresh roll 20. I'm going to refresh oh, roll fucking 20. hell. I haven't, I, oh my gosh. I don't think you've rolled a success yet. Uh, I rolled two successes. Oh, okay. Uh, once. Oh, that's right, that's right. With the, yeah. with the, of, holy of the shit. Then you should refresh roll 20. Just refresh roll 20. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so, uh, she i'm gonna say because she can't fight you on it um you start trying to drag her over to medical um it takes a lot and people begin noticing you um because she's trying to put up a fight um so basically you um you successfully manage to get her to medical and you come in kind of the front the doors uh slide open and uh there are a few people here this is a much nicer station there's like a person behind a legit desk. It's sterile. Um, and the woman behind the desk immediately stands when she sees you drag Jalissa in uh, this kind of convenient care. And uh, the woman goes, well, what happened? Um, the women have uh, the woman's in like robes, the whole nine. Uh, snake bite. She looks at you like you're crazy. I'm not lying. Um, and, and she kind of uh, reaches for you. Uh, she hits a couple buttons to call some people um, and she hits an intercom and she says, uh, we're going to need emergency help, uh, uh, prep uh, prep medical. Uh, and so they, you can kind of hear people begin, a couple people come out and they slide a, uh, they bring out a, a uh, what are those things called? Uh, uh, you know, that you put people on and wheel them about. Um, I, it's on a people cart. It's Gurney. a stretcher. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, was trying. Um, I like I like people cart. Uh, so yes, there's a people gurney. cart works. Uh, it's cart. in space. They're called people carts. <laughs> yeah, space snake. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're sweating, gnome. Oh, um, so they kind of toss her on and she's she go, she looks at you and she says don't go anywhere i'll be right back um you don't know that that's actually the case she looks very unwell um and the nurse you hear her tell a doctor um it's a snake bite uh and they kind of wheel her back between a double set of doors and as they bustle away so the sound clears and you're left kind of in this waiting room with these people waiting this is the worst. Is it quiet here? Yeah. Much okay. quieter than outside. I will find a seat with my back up against the wall. And I close my eyes, uh, cross my arms across my chest, and yep. take deep, calming breaths and yep. try again to reach out to Tamir. Yep. Oh look. my gosh. Okay. So yep. great. You um great. you try to reach out again and maybe it's the sound of um like a medical machine like boop 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 that breaks your concentration but you still can't get there but instead as you go into a deep trance trying to reach out for tamir instead you make contact with something else a failure is just a failure to contact tamir not to contact something else yep 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 you're muted yep I know I'm muted. Okay, okay, Keep good. going. I just, I wanted to hear that fucking great. It looked so good coming out of your lips. Um, as you, <laughs> as you sit there uh, in this medical uh, facility and the sound of that machine, that boop, 
boop, boop, puts you into a meditative state. You connect the way you have before with something else, someone else. You find a similar medical chair under your hiney, cold steel of the arms, the same sound of a medical machine, except it's, it's attached to someone else. A face that you know, Sewell's father. He lays in a bed with his eyes wide open. His chest is heaving, so you know that he's breathing. But across the room, in a chair identical to yours, is a child. Am I seeing through Soul's father's eyes or the child's eyes? You don't know whose eyes you're seeing through. There's a third person in the room. Okay. That you don't know at the moment, but you do know the child is there. It sees you. Just observe. So you just sit for a while. Is that, uh, you just kind of chill. Oh, y'all, I have sounds. I... Go ahead. I try to say out loud, where am I? Um, obviously Sewell's father does not respond and the body that you're in doesn't respond either. This seems to be a little different this time. Unlike the last time where uh, you saw through Julissa's eyes and she maintained control, you seem to have control. You even maybe lift your hand to see it, not your hand. And- I recognize the, the look of uh... the hand. If I look down, can I try to do, do I recognize anything about this person? Um, all good questions. How mean do I want to be? I have, I have corruption to spend, don't I? You've got corruption. You've got darkness points. All my dice are failing me. Go for it. Have fun. I have, I have, I have darkness to spend. <sighs> You look at your hands, which are gloved, uh, so there's no defining factor. You kind of look down at your clothing. You're not in robes. Um, you seem to be in a well-fitted black leather military attire. And as you kind of look yourself over, your eyes catch something at your feet. A helmet. A helmet that you know to have belonged to a person named Kasha. Huh. Hmm. The child never takes its eyes off of you. It knows that you are there. What does this mean? I try to communicate with the child either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Voicing since I can obviously move my hands. Yeah. There's so much love in chat right now. Um, yes, I, you, you speak, um, you say words, you think it's almost like trying to communicate underwater. It seems heavy and, and weighted. And you hear that sound of the child. He opens his mouth, but again, not mouthing anything, just sound in the air and the child a voice you have not heard in a while says i see you is your job not finished yet the wish has not been filled I have learned much 
consuming the mind of this miscreant. It gestures to Sewell's father. <laughs> you guys are so hyped for space. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's happening right now? No, I can't decide if they're just generally hyped. Are they hyped for uh, the kid being oh back? Gosh. Are you hyped because Tal's in some trouble? Oh gosh, I'm so nervous. Um, I brain is dead. The child says, "Yeah, it basically says, uh, uh, yeah." He he tells you that he's pretty much consumed the mind of this man. Many interesting things I know now. Care to share anything I might find interesting? Maybe anything about the prison that his son went to? Maybe oh, anything yes. about the boy. I have seen his, and he looks, the child like uh, breaks contact with you for the first time and actually looks at Sewell's dad. I have seen his shame. He uses the word of father to manipulate and control. He does not feel remorse for his son. Oh, no, I believe he would. Many children he has. It seems they are all doomed to die at each other's hands. But why are you here? Tal Took a wrong turn at Kua and got lost. The boy smiles a little bit. The, the, the child smiles. Um, it is an eerie, creepy, dead smile. But the Jin responds, of course. I know nothing of this other things you talk of. He mentions you, you know, mentioning the the prison and all of that. Didn't think so. You know anything of the emissaries? The child's eyes cut back to you. Very, very poignantly. If I did, I would not still be here. Fair. How is your friend? Which one? I've got a couple now. Go figure. Me have friends. Yes, be careful. The more valuable things that you have in your life, the more that can be taken away. I noticed. Thanks. I spoke of the girl. The hatchling. Do you try to keep it under wraps? You know he means Lamara. I know. Um, well, I hate to uh, get information to run, but I gotta go. 
and I try to break the connection. And you do so with ease. And you find yourself back in your body. You don't know how much time has passed, but you're met with the same <laughs> boop, boop, boop of a medical machine. The door swings open. A nurse walks out. She is wearing black and white robes, uh, all her hair and most of her body is covered all the way to the neck. A white piece kind of drapes down. Um, and she comes out and she says, your sister is going to be fine. Okay. Uh, it's good that you got long? her to us when you did, though strange. We have no medical record for her on file. Well, I'm not a keeper. I just saw her in pain and brought her here. So we'll figure that out later, I guess. Unfortunately, we cannot release a patient without a medical record. Adjudicator will have to be called. All right. Can you give me a little bit to go to a ship and grab the data stick? Um... She says, we will keep her here as long as we can. All right. So what is your plan? My plan, how long would it take for me to get from here where I am to my ship? If you, if you truck it, if you push, you could get to the ship in about 20 minutes. You're not sure how much time has passed when you were in the trance, probably another 30, 40, 45 minutes. Okay. Um, Hospital break. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, where's the nearest terminal? I would have kept an eye out for that on yeah, my way there's here. A couple, there's a couple public terminals that you can access. Okay. I will run to the nearest public terminal, grab a blank data stick that I always keep out of my, out of one of my pockets, um, and stick that in. Okay. Um, empty stick shows empty. Yeah. I will then essentially do the work to create a file for Jalissa. Okay. This is going to be a data gen roll. Yep. Something we don't get to see Tal do very much. If roll Malik's 20, around, I he, swear to the icon. Please roll, roll 20, come on. Please. She deserves this one. No! Okay. Ugh. re -roll. I want you just to roll until it doesn't roll a failure. Like, we just need to shake it out of roll 20. Like, I am okay. dead set. Every roll. Look at that. Oh, <gasps> okay. oh, I got one. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to have you roll a data gen, a proper one, because we broke it. We had to break it. <laughs> Are Come you on. sure we did? Yes. I'm yes. Okay. <laughs> we did it. Okay. <laughs> we don't see this very often from Tao. Um, that was like that's ridiculous. I just need what a moment, four, please. Five, six, seven. That is unbelievable. Well, we shook it out of roll 20. I forced it out. Um it is a rousing success for Tao. As she clicks away at a terminal, uh, making a fake identity for your sister, right? Is that what I'm to yep. understand? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Tao's like, this is not how today was supposed to go. This is why I stay in space. Huh. And we see you just start clicking away. And it's kind of an interesting moment. We get to see Tao use uh, skills that is often uh, delineated to somebody else on the team. Malik always handles this. Um, uh, so yeah and when you're satisfied you've tapped in now that it's been made you have to feed it into the system and make it look legit and you do you feed it into the medical system into the security system maybe malik has taught you a thing or two uh as you have been um together over the last really few months um almost a year now well Malik's really good at inserting data where it doesn't belong. That, speaking of inserting data where it doesn't belong, you pull the, the stick that now has your sister's identity like fed into a system. Um, You're welcome, and you Mike. have information for her. Um, 
But you uh, also have a second data stick that you're just yeah. time sensitive. Yep. Gonna gonna that's that's next real quick. Gonna okay. gonna look at that one. You pop it in. What you see is a map. Uh, first things first, it's like a it's like a blueprint of Coriolis, and a it's like if you sliced it in half. Uh, and you see that somewhere near kind of the centralized core where the sanatorium lies, there is obviously a way down into the center, the actual center. And the line kind of trails down and through uh, the central and it stops. It stops deep in the cellar. Um, but yeah. Okay. Well, that's where I'm going. Um, you, yeah, okay. Are you going to go back? You go back for your sister. I'm, I'm certain of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just I just did a very stressful thing in order to get her not you arrested. <laughs> you did. Um, so, so you walk back in and you can see um, the nurse is in conversation with the front desk woman who is pretty adamant about trying to call security and uh, the woman goes, here, she, she's, she come back. See, the nurse says she's back. Um, and Jessica, she says, please tell me you have some kind of identification for her. Well, yes, I just, here, and I, I will hand over the correct stick that I, because yeah. uh -huh. that, that second data stick with the map in it went right uh -huh. back into that underarm pocket. Yep. The, uh, the front desk lady ooh, <laughs> pops the stick in, runs the data. Um, she looks hesitant at first. Uh, there's that moment where it runs for almost too long and everybody's like holding their breath and then eventually it pops up and it says cleared. I do my best to look very, very annoyed. Okay. Like, I can't believe you are inconveniencing me for this. Um, interesting. <laughs> are you trying to manipulate her into, uh... N not necessarily, but trying to, like, add to the illusion that this is a legitimate thing and I'm kind of it's it's annoying this you know when when hospitals command. can't find your medical record and you're like yeah but okay. i've been to the doctor okay like okay how much this more is... paperwork do you fucking want i'm gonna make this an a command roll okay let's see if we actually successfully god, roll 20 <laughs> come on roll 20 Oh okay. my god. It's okay. You tap your foot. All it does is it, it's not good. all all it was was to affect her. Yeah. Um she kind of looks at you. She can tell you're you're looking annoyed. You're probably not the first annoyed person she's dealt with today. Um and not gonna uh, be the she, last. Yeah, exactly, not gonna be the last, but she has to do it the right way. So she clicks and clicks and clicks, and it takes far too long. And as you tap your uh, you tap your foot and try to speed it up, uh she says, Okay, your sister is clear to go. And she hands the stick back to you with your sister's new fake identity on it. And uh the uh the nurse says, We'll bring her out front. Okay. They try, you can tell, they try to wheel her out. She does not like that. Jalis is like, stop it, stop. Uh and she like puts her jacket on and she stands up. She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. She's still a little pale in the face. She could use some crackers and some juice, but she's gonna be fine. And she comes out and looks at you like, all of it, the whole thing, like, you brought me to this medical, you brought me to like a public medical facility. How did you get me out of there? Like all of these things run across her face in like a single instant. Come on, let's go, we got work to do. And as she leaves, she says, please tell me you at least ran the data from that stick. Of course I did, what do you think I am, an idiot? Um, and then I, I give her the stick with her her new information on and I say, here, you got a new identity too. She goes, you kept it? How long have you had this? Uh, like 10 seconds. <laughs> she, she goes, no, 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 how long was I in there? How long, since the moment we pulled this, um, she's like, uh, uh, she runs over to a public trash can and throws the stick into this public trash can. And and, and she rushed, kind of bustles back over to her. She's like, come on, we got to go. Okay. And she kind of grabs your hand and begins bustling off towards the train. And as you go to step on, you hear a small explosion. Great. 
a trash bin goes up in flames. Uh, hot, literally hot burning trash uh, kind of now rains down. You hear a woman scream and a few guards run past the two of you near uh, the kind of open area where this explosion went off. Well, it's a good way to protect it. Yep, and you hop on a train. And she says, well, I hope you have a perfect memory because you have the map now. Luckily, my memory's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, too bad you never remember my birthday. She kind of whispers under her breath. <laughs> Knowing that that's not true and you always remember. <laughs> and, and that's what, like, like, you're like, do you even keep like, track of days in space? Like, do you? <laughs> like, Tal knows what day it is any day. <laughs> Like, if you tell Tal it's your birthday, she'll probably say happy birthday. <laughs> yes, I love it. So, yes, there's literally hot burning trash, y'all. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> so, uh, the two of you sit on basically uh, the trains for Coriolis in my my mind are actually these little pods that hold like four or five, maybe six people at a time, and it's like like a like this a strand of pearls basically, um, and these little private pods, and you and your sister have one to yourself. Uh, as it speeds along to the next destination, which doesn't really matter at this moment. Your sister just kind of sits there and kind of thuds her head against a white uh, cushion on this little private tran pod. I uh, just kind of lean back and say, hey, so uh, what's that arm feel? Well, I guess I have two new scars. She gestures to two holes in her arm. She like pulls, you know, pulls the sleeve down and like shows you yeah. holes in her arm. Well, looks pretty cool. It's a good story. Yeah, it's kind of an embarrassing story. I always caught the snake first time around. She'll never do business with me again. Well, seems like today's a little curse. Let's hope not, because we have uh, an appointment to make. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get there. Sure of it. Here's to hoping. Um, and she says, so where did the map start? I will tell her I, as a player, do not remember at all what you described as the map. That's okay. I'm, oh. <laughs> I got you. Uh, it started at the sanatorium. Um, you would know it starts at the sanatorium. And so the two of you have a nice little sisterly ride together in the trans of Coriolis. Um, you go around this way, you hop another one that takes you, and you end up um, what is in the upper area, actually of Coriolis. The sanatorium was a place that was spoken to you, um, that they spoke to you about, but uh, when you were all here investigating like the emissary's apartment, that kind of thing, and that Kasha had mentioned. Uh, the sanatorium is um, known uh, for harsh means of curing mysticism. But it is also a large mental institution. This is where Lamara was held. Um, this sanatorium is also the largest medical facility on Coriolis. So it's going to have like a proper hospital and a bunch of other things uh, as well. Uh, as you, your sister uh, gets a little worried, in fact, as you pull, uh, you kind of get off and you can see it, this, this beautiful glass building uh in the upper crust of coriolis um and she says you sure the sanatorium that's what it said look if i could draw it for you i would but you know i'm shit at drawing anyways she goes why why would the entrance be in the sanatorium she's like i know that they function out of the cellar but She's like, okay, we need to at least know we have to take a way down. I can't imagine that the public elevators are... And then she kind of stops and she looks at you. Um, she says, but I bet you there's a maintenance elevator. 
I lean in and I say, there's also air vents. She looks at you like, okay, uh, do you know something I don't know? Well, there are ways to get around without ever having to touch a main road or talk to anybody. Okay. Do you know how to get into these? And this is off of our map. I mean, we can definitely take it, but we don't want to get lost, at least not in their territory. Well, I don't know whose territory we're going through, so I'll trust you on that. If you want to take the map way, we'll take the map way. Um, you can tell your sister is uneasy walking into the sanatorium. Like, maybe that's not a great idea. But uh, if this is where it starts, this is where it starts, you know? If I remember correctly, uh, would it be reasonable that the map, or I could follow the map in a, the series of air events? Um, you might be able to do like a comparison and try to figure that out. Um, sure. Sure. Okay. How do I want to, this is just going to be a at least roll. to get, at least to get around the sanatorium to like another, like a, a little bit further on the line because, uh -huh. because Melissa seems to be really unnerved by going uh -huh. to the sanatorium. Tal and, wants to try okay, to say, go yeah. around that. And see if, if there's possible. another way down. Um, yes. Okay, I'm going to have you make a wits roll. Um, you could make a wits technology roll. I have technology. Okay, you could roll a technology. This okay. is like, how does the inner... Tal knows ships, right? Coriolis yeah. is just a really big ship. Big ship. Uh, so this is kind of how Tal's brain's going to think about this uh, as we okay. try to... Okay. Limited success. Limited success. Okay. So you're like, okay... Last time you took the air vents, you took them from the emissary's apartment, which was at a totally different section. But you know for a fact, Tal does, that they led to a centralized kind of chamber, hollow chamber, that runs down the center of all of Coriolis. Um, there seems to be a maintenance elevator shaft, which is probably what this is trying to lead you to. The original map was trying to lead you to. Yeah. All right. Now, you're trying to think about how you might be able to take air vents to bypass this or... Um, to get yeah. straight to the yeah, to get straight where you need to go <laughs> you know i always said something that was just gonna be bad <laughs> um, but uh to get straight to the elevator shaft yeah um and then from there we can uh -huh. continue on the path as i remember on the map okay um your sister looks you up and down and she looks herself up and down and she says uh, maybe if we're climbing, this isn't going to be, she says, hang on, I have an idea. Um, she backtracks a little, um, and takes you not very far from where the sanatorium is. You can still see the sanatorium, this massive building from where you are, a shopping district, in fact. And she walks over to a stall and your sister reaches in her jacket pocket and she pulls out a, what looks to be, uh, like a chit, uh, basic burr money right like a piece of metal but it is a color that you've never seen before and it has some emblems on it that you've never seen before <coughs> your sister uh slides it across to this this person uh they don't say anything the person just looks at them and your sister simply gestures for two two indeed and they slip up, he slips across uh, two folded packages wrapped in brown paper. All right, we all take one. Your sister says, uh, hang on to that. We're going to need it in a second. She kind of slots hers into like a side bag that she carries. I'll put mine in mine. And uh, with your limited success. You imagine that the sanatorium itself has to have and be connected to a massive air ventilation system. And you were right. You find one to this building, like at the base of the building, that you're able to pry away and the two of you can crawl in. And your sister says, hey, 
Uh, open it up. All right, I will try. Fucking hell, I'm gonna try. You, you snatch it open and you kind of shake the package free and it's a suit. A suit that you've seen before. Well, part of it anyways. Uh, a new, brand spanking new one. A spider suit. Um, one for you and one for her. And she says, it's not really my style, but whatever. And she kind of like takes her jacket off, which Dot is going to do because it's fucking hot. Um, and uh, she... Hey, same uh, though. Oh my God. <laughs> we, we, went from, we went from jackets to, uh, to tank tops, y'all. That's, uh. that's where this sister train is. Yes. Yes, the sex suit lightning. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. is Only fresh, this one is it's brand not, not, new. Has, yeah, Never been, been worn. Uh, for sex. So she, uh, she, you see her like take her jacket off. She tosses it to the side and she like shimmies this very, very tight suit up. Um, and it zips all the way um, and actually covers like the eyes and all the way up to your neck. It's meant to hide you. Um, and do you put yours on? And zoop, zoop, you zip each other up. She might even toss her jacket back over top just to, like, look cool. But tell you can feel it. Uh, it is so light uh, that it doesn't even really feel like you're wearing much. Um, it does form fit to you once you get on. If anywhere was, like, too tight or too loose, it kind of, like, sucks, suctions to the body. Um, and we see the Tuma sister standing there in matching uh, suits as they crawl into the vents of the massive hospital the sanatorium here on Coriolis and down um make their way down into the cellar and as you crawl you can feel it Tal the the fingers kind of stick and you kind of get your your groove of like how the suit functions and works you can feel your feet pushing you forward you never slip at all um it's as if you're magnetized in some way um they are not sex suits they're spider suits and they're meant for climbing. <laughs> they're meant for being super secret. Uh, <laughs> Damn you, chat. Y'all. <laughs> right? Eris does look so good in that wig. So good in that wig. Um, and you, you crawl and you crawl and you crawl and you make it into kind of this core area and you see it does in fact open up to a massive shaft. Uh, this shaft has pulley systems and lots of like wires and um, uh, like airline cable coming down it. Um, and as the two of you kind of get to the edge of it, you maybe even Jalissa like leans out to look up and she pulls back just in time as the maintenance elevator <laughs> passed, almost taking off her face. Um, yes, all of you that are 12 year olds in chat, I said shaft. Shaft to the shaft shaft. I'm gonna say it again because they're about to crawl into a shaft. We'll see. You can't shame me, chat. How many times can shaft? Um, <laughs> Dot can say it a lot shamelessly. Shaft shaft to the shaft shaft. <laughs> can someone clip that, please? <laughs> please. Okay. What was I saying? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jalissa goes to look. Thank uh, you. I need that. Shaft, and she she pulls back just in time as the uh, maintenance elevator comes swooshing past and drops deep into the belly of Coriolis. Um, she turns around like, whoops, I almost lost my face. Um, and then she's like, well, I guess it's time to test out these suits. And uh, she kind of tightens her bag down to her. And you see her put her hand uh, around the side. And she looks at you and she kind of swings her feet out uh, as if, if without hanging on to anything. And sure enough, the suit keeps her hands in place. And she kind of hangs there and smiles. And she's like, man, this is cool. And she begins kind of crawling down the elevator shaft. I will follow. <laughs> trying to go trying to go quickly because <laughs> yes. i don't know when the next one's coming yep um and yep. So your sister actually looks up as you you're all you're um climbing down she looks up to see she said that must have been the entrance that we were given and kind of gestures um i i hate you all i can't believe you. <laughs> 
I hate you. Chat. Um, Thanks, Chad. <laughs> I love you, G. <laughs> um, and uh, so it is. And the two of you begin That's going on my down. clip list. You can see that it is hundreds of like a hundred stories down. It is way down there. And you actually crawl past a few different openings that go to other ventilation systems, to other areas of Coriolis. Eventually, uh, the kind of uh, smooth walls give way to rust and interior, um, like open-faced um, wire housing and those kinds of things. Big tubing, and it's very spacey. Um, there's your adjective for the day, spacey. Um, and... Sure enough, as the two of you are climbing down, I am going to have both of you make a dexterity, but you get a plus two with the suit. Oops, that's good. I need to roll two more die because I failed. Your sister may be dropping. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, God. Oh, Your turn. Oh, oh, I can't. Please. You said dexterity? Mm-hmm. I don't have that. I were gonna okay, go you agility. can just roll an agility. But agility is my best stat. <laughs> okay, so you're going to be fine. Yay! Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Your sister begins having trouble. Maybe her foot gets stuck uh, in something. Um, you are having no problem. And then you hear the sound of technology turn on. The, whir the like, whirring of the elevator as it begins to lift from the bottom floor back up. And um, yeah, we're going to say, for the sake of another corruption bar, your sister's leg is now stuck. Jillis is really showing her true colors today. <laughs> she's just causing problems for Tal. Her foot has gotten stuck. Um, and she's like, Tal, Tal, I can't get it out. And you can see the airline I, cable as it's moving the opposite direction. This thing is rising very quickly. I'm going to try to get her out. God, why do I always have to save her? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I planned it. Um, okay. Uh, I will you, um, a, a force, if that is better. Um, I don't know if it's better or not. It's I'll the take same amount of dice. <laughs> okay, so I'll give it. I'll give it to you then. Uh, if I roll agility, I get a plus two for the suit, right? Yes. Okay, then I'm doing that. Okay. Okay. <gasps> okay. Okay. A limited success. Your sister is also going to join you because she's also got to get out of the way. Oh, oh yeah. Th this character, she always forget. Okay, I got to put two there, and then I got to do it this way. Okay, I imagine that this thing is, it's, and your sister's like, help me, help me, help me. And uh, you're pulling and you're pulling and it's not working. And Tao, you have a very brilliant idea, um, which is that uh, these suits are going to keep you um, like locked onto whatever surface you like stick to. And so we see this very cool moment as Tao stops pulling, trying to use brute strength and uses um, her agility. And I imagine it looks kind of like uh, doing a cartwheel midair. She kind of flips backwards and she grabs her sister's hand and her body weight flipping to the opposite wall is what pulls her sister free. And the two of them kind of free fly to the opposite side as they both stick to it just in time to have the elevator pass up behind them. And you can feel it this much space between your backs and the elevator uh, wall itself as the two of you lay as flat as you possibly can, trying to keep your breath um, as to not, um, yeah, to not get caught by it. And it passes and goes up behind you. And the two of you have a moment to breathe. Your sister looks over at you. Her sunglasses are now kind of cracked around the edges. Uh, she looks a little worse for wear. Okay, so maybe this wasn't the best idea, but you know, I mean, we haven't been seen by anybody. Oh, she goes, oh, if we're lucky. Yeah. As if she knows something that you don't. Oh. And you continue your trajectory downwards. The elevator does not start up again. It does not drop down. And as you continue going, um, you reach solid ground. And as you do, your sister, you can see the look on her face, this moment of like, we can't, she feels like she needs to tell you something, that they're, that it, it, it's eating away at her. She kind of rubs that spar on her arm, which is still sore and in pain from the venom. Um, and she says, Tao, 
um, the place we're about to go is not, there are, there are two societies on Coriolis. There's the one that everybody sees up top and there's, well, there's the one that lives in the bowels of Coriolis. And you can tell she's struggling to like find the words. Um, Tal, do you have culture? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe as a child, you heard stories of the boogies, like the boogeyman that might live inside of Coriolis. These, these creatures, uh, uh, space ghouls, uh, people corrupted uh, by the darkness uh, and the lack of human contact. But it is just stories. These things don't actually exist. They're told to kids to keep them out of air vents and from crawling around and getting caught in elevator shafts, okay? Like, that's, that's what those stories exist for. It's not real. But your sister seems as serious as she can be about the matter anyways. I love Teens in Space, by the way. Dragons are cats. I love that game. Okay, more space. Uh, it is very, very dark down here. What kind of light do you have on you, if at all, Tal? Is it just like just your wrist or like do you have a is it your eye uh tal does still have her she always i mean she it's not like yeah, she leaves it at home that eye. <laughs> <laughs> can't really take it out without some processes um yeah so she has her eye um she i'm sure she also has a light on her personal comms um okay. yeah so i imagine there might be like a small one um on a personal comms that you're wearing uh, maybe around your wrist um, so if you pick your gun up, it's almost like it comes off of the wrist and the gun. And then um, I imagine that your eye lets off a little light as well. Uh, your yeah. sister turns on a, a, like a light around her neck um, that sh sheds a little light. But down here, it is, it creaks and eeks. This is the center of Coriolis, you can tell. And it is pitch black, dark. The walls look like a barrel of snakes uh, with just these massive coilings of wire and tubing uh, that feed for the internal uh, structure of Coriolis. So in that case, I am I am going to turn, uh, turn on my eye. I reach up and press a button on my temple. Um, yeah. Oof. Or sorry, it was behind my ear. I press a button yeah. behind my ear. And eye uh, on. my eye turns, uh, what turns color? on. What it's color red. light? It is, okay, it's, it's red. red. It beams a red light that washes the entire space. Your sister looks over. Did she know about the eye before this? No. She looks over at you and she says, Tal Tuma, I worried for so many years that you would judge me for altering my body. And here you are with a bionic mechanism in your head. You never asked. She she knows she knows she's right. She knows you're totally right, uh, and she never asked. And it's and not so like I, you know, <laughs> not like you ever told me your secrets. So why should I tell you mine? She says, "Well, you could ask me now." Okay. Do you have any secrets you'd like to share? Nobody likes to share their secrets, Tal. Your voices are kind of echoing and I don't mean you're loud it's just like you're in a hollow space um with just the two of you there's there's nothing here what are we doing here anyways what are we supposed to find here <sighs> she says I'm making an exchange for the map there what are, are we exchanging I guess we'll find out. And she starts walking. Um, yeah, she starts walking. I want my sound to come back. Um, there it goes. So, 
now that you're at this point, how you lead, you have to lead the way because you actually have the map, um, at least memorize as much as you can. And um, it is disorienting to walk empty darkness. Uh, the flooding of the red light eventually is overwhelming um, all in all. And make, a, I'm going to have you both make an observation. That way if one of us fail. Okay, she did it. That's good. If one of us fail, we both know who's failing. Hey, Ooh, neither of us failed. Thank you. <laughs> um, at the same time, the both I of you, it. like you can hear the sound of both of your feet, that pattern that happens as two people travel. And then there's another set of steps. Your sister immediately stops and you immediately stop with her. There's definitely, definitely somebody else here or something else here. Uh, does it seem like it's behind us or? Um, you're unable to tell, but your sister looks over her shoulder as if it is coming from behind you. I will kind of turn around and, and, and look. Uh, you turn around now beaming that red light across the space. You catch what you think is a humanoid figure as it darts across this uh this hallway that you've been walking down you catch only it's like back and feet as it passes across there is something else here Julissa, i don't <laughs> know how any of this goes um she goes i i don't either uh i just know we've been given permission to meet with them i don't know um she actually kind of begins to look worried now too um you know she might have had a plan but you're realizing now maybe it wasn't the greatest plan i you've never been down here before i not really this isn't my neighborhood if you know what i mean and she kind of gestures around uh to the area um the figure whoever it was or whatever it was is now gone the two of you stand there again and jillissa makes a motion that maybe you should continue moving okay i will i will keep going um yeah, I'm still following that map in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, if I see any other things, I will keep going. Well, I'm gonna... the, it begins to yeah. get brighter, a warm light. It's also very hot here at the core of Coriolis. Uh, it's kind of everything steams and hisses. Um, and there is this kind of warm, embering light that meets your red glow from your eye uh, that lets you know you may be coming into something. And you hear two voices. Uh, they're haggling or arguing over something. One of them is like, this is exactly how much it's supposed to cost. And the other one's like, you dirty hag, trying to... Um, and you see them step into the light all the against the, the, the backdrop of the warm glow. It's just a silhouette. And uh, this these two figures draped in torn fabrics of all kinds one of them as they move jangles you can hear the clanking of like metal or cans or something um and now that they're like actively moving say 10 or 15 feet in front of you the stench follows the stench of human bo um as she tries to pull from him and he pulls back and there's this little uh, kind of tug of war and eventually uh, he, uh, she gets it free uh, and she goes, ah, uh, and begins running down the corridor. Um, he says, you dirty whore, as he yells behind her and he kind of starts chasing her towards the light. Your sister looks at you like, told you it wasn't our neighborhood. Well, um, I, all I have is map. Yeah, your sister kind of begins to get nervous. You see her, she like puts her hood up at this point, like trying to like stay even more. She kind of tries to hide the fact that you're both wearing these very, 
very expensive suits. She like zips her jacket up a little bit and um, pulls the socks up on her boots to hide it up the leg a little bit. Yeah, I I kind of do the same. I'm wishing that I hadn't given her my scarf. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um. And as you get closer to the warm light, you begin to hear all kinds of things. Uh, the air fills with the sounds of people, at least you think. Uh, weak voices, crying, whimpering off in the distance. Uh, maybe some repairs being done, bolts being drilled into metal. Uh, the sound of workers shouting at one another. Um, And then you open up into a very loud space. And it's not loud because of a lot of people. It's loud because a part of Coriolis's main, like, uh, radio, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, like, radi uh, radioactive, like, core of the entire space station. You can see a portion of it here. Uh, it is what's providing most of the heat in here. Um, and you can see that this area has been repurposed. There are strains, it's like a strange shanty town inside of this belly of this beast. Um, and Jalissa goes, oh, we made it. As she kind of gestures for the two of you to uh, try to blend with the crowd a little bit. I do my best, but how much can we blend here a really good question it's gonna be <laughs> difficult because you both still everybody here is let me rephrase that most everybody here is haggard and worn and um i mean we did just go through some shit but <laughs> yeah but we're, yeah. we're probably a bit must but we're not like that <laughs> even and tell maybe as you spend more time here and as your, your sister's trying to figure out exactly where the next step is. And as you begin to look at these people, you can see a couple things. One, their skin is pale. They don't see sunlight. They probably never come out of the center core of Coriolis. Um, because of this, they're extremely pale. They're extremely emaciated. Their bodies are dirty and covered in soot and grease from crawling in and out of the the um the shafts and the uh the air ventilation systems where they probably actually live to some degree um their eyes are deep and sunken and more importantly you see their teeth are sharpened filed down to points um Maybe a child can't be more than 10 or 12 uh, holding a very disgusting doll, missing an eye and hair and all of it, looks up at you and she smiles and you see it for the first time, the filed teeth. Um, and your sister says, uh, Tao, come on, this way. While I probably pause and look for a moment and I... Tell's a little jaded at this point. She's like, yeah, kind of expected something weird. Gonna keep going. I mean, she talked to a gin on her ship and offered it coffee. So what's a kid with pointy teeth? <laughs> um, that's true. <laughs> okay, you... Your sister uh, gestures for you to head a certain way. There is a large... We'll call it a tent. It's like a makeshift tent, but it is one of the larger buildings in this uh, small shanty town. Um, and you see a sign for the first time, Tao. Uh, it says the slummers um, kind of across the top of it. And as you walk up to the tent, a very fierce female uh, shaved head in its entirety. Um, she wears a makeshift armor, clearly pieced together from anything that they could um, like get uh, or piece together. Uh, steps in front, um, and they simply look at you and your sister, and they say, um, 
What business do you have with the Slummer Queen? I nudge Shalissa. Tal doesn't uh, talk. She's not a talker. Yeah, yeah, you nudge <laughs> your sister. Your sister's like, right, yeah. Um, uh, I have an appointment. Um, a trade. The woman looks at your sister. Your sister doesn't blink. She does these kind of deals, and maybe Tal is learning that pretty frequently. This seems to be what she does, um, or how she does things. Um, take an identity, well, do jobs. Tal's picked up on that. That's why she's automatically deferring. Like, Tal, Tal can get you where you want to go, but don't tell her to talk to people. Let's see. Okay, perfect. The guard looks at you, uh, or looks at you, looks at your sister, and says, uh, of course, she's expecting you and pulls this tent back and as it does so smells different kinds of smells capture in your nose towel the smell of incense of rich herbs being burned um of some kind of sweet uh dense tar being smoked from some kind of bubbly uh jar and in this room stands the, sum, uh, the slumber queen, along with her court. Uh, they sit around her. The tent, though not large, is impressive. But what can't be denied is the amount of snakes in this place. Three huge ones, in fact, much larger than the one that your sister tackled and put her hand down its throat. These could swallow a person's body whole. One of them sits at the slumber queen's feet. The other two are coiled up a kind of makeshift column that is holding up this tent area. She is beautiful. Her collar wide and tall. She wears um, robes and a dress. She has these kind of dome pieces that cover her breasts uh, that make almost like a plate armor, a corseted piece, and this kind of gauzy uh, white dress that pieces it all together her head covered, her face white with makeup, and black smudge starts at her temple or at her forehead and runs all the way down as if she simply ran her hand through oil and raked it down her face. She looks like she's been crying the way that the black makeup runs. The snakes turn to attention as the two of you enter the room. And she does not bow. Maybe it's more of like a curtsy. She curtsies a little bit to greet you. And she says, yes, I've been expecting you. Come. And she gestures closer. Though I was only expecting one. I'm her guide. I see. Your sister steps up. She says, she has nothing to do with this. She's just here to assure that I made it okay. The slumber queen nods. I have what you seek. And she kind of puts a hand out and somebody lays a scroll in her hand, an actual piece of paper, real paper. It's kind of big and thick, the way like a poster might be. And she kind of holds it up and wiggles it in the air. Right here. This was not an easy item to attain. And so it will not be an easy item for you to attain. And Julissa says, uh, I am willing to pay the price. I have been told what you need in exchange for the item. She says, yes. We have a pest. I need it gone. Julissa says, I can take care of that for you. Good. 
She cuts her eyes to you, Tal. Are you part of this deal? Your sister looks very nervous. She lo she look makes eyes at you and it's like, no, say no. No. Interesting. So be it. She hands the map over. Since, Jalissa, you're going to be on the hunt for what I assume is the next few weeks. I'll give it to her. And she passes the map off to you, Tal. She hands you this rolled up piece of paper. And even if you unroll it, you can see there is a hand-drawn map, like blueprint on the inside of it. You don't even have to take a long look at it. It looks to be the truth. Um, you can get a better look maybe later. And uh, you hear your sister say, so remember that part where we are supposed to maybe be honest with each other about things? Yeah, go for it. I um, I can't leave for a while. All right. I'm going to stay here and complete the job. She kind of looks at you with worried eyes, but also knowing eyes of what she signed up for. Okay. Uh, your sister kind of pulls close to you and she grabs you by the jacket and not in a threatening way, but in that like, in that personal way. She says, I promised that I would help, I would help get Sewell back. I have a lot of things to make up for Tal. And I have some things that I'll never be able to make up for with Sewell. But I have to start somewhere. He'll know you helped. I'll make sure of it. Because I don't need him to know. I just want to know he's safe. I want him to know. And you hear something clatter to the floor. It looks to be some kind of staff or a weapon, uh, long, metal, and it has a, a, a kind of pike-like point at the end. The Slum Queen says, of course, we cannot allow you to bring your surface weapons into our world. And you see, once again, the situation get more dire. As your sister unlatches her weapons from her hip, pulls her knife boot out, or uh, her boot knife out, and hands all her weapons over to you. I put her boot knife in my opposite boot because I have one too. You one too, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I essentially start loading her weapons up. Um, Glad I got lots of pockets. And she, um, she looks you in the eyes and she says, when this is all done, we'll get a drink. Yeah. We'll get several. And she needs to hear that, if nothing else, for reassurance that she's coming back. I pull her in for a hug. She hugged you very deeply, knowing that this could possibly be her last time to get to hug you. And she says, I fought a lot worse than any monster in the basement. Knowing that your sister is underplaying what's actually at stake. And she kind of puts you at arm's distance and she looks you up and down and she runs kind of her hands down your hair to the ends and she says, I lied. You look better in red and the haircut's nice. 
Thanks. Tamir did it. I bet he did. She kind of gives you an eyebrow. <laughs> I, I give her a light punch in the arm. <laughs> um, it's the same. Ah, she, she flinches because, of course, it's the snake bite uh, where you punch, no doubt. And she withdraws um, a little bit. Um, the, sl- uh, the slumber queen says, Tick tock, dearest. I'll see you later. And you see your sister pick up this uh, pike-like weapon and two of the slumber queen's guards take her off and out of the building. And it is the last time you see Jalissa for this game. Tal, you stand there with your sister's weapons on you with a map of the prison that Sewell's currently being held in, a very top secret item, something that you've been looking for for months, anything to help with the mission. And the slumber queen looks at you um, and she says, well, are you lost? No, have a good day. And I will turn and walk out. Um, I've got everything already tucked away in pockets and and bags and stuff like that. and uh yeah essentially just make my way straight back um to my ship through Mm -hmm. the air vents okay um you go back because at this point i am loaded down with yeah you've got lots of weapons lots of weapons (laughs) there's little to nowhere to hide it on this suit we know that for a fact yeah clearly all skin tight suits and (laughs) coriolis have no room for your weapons um and uh you make it back to civilization maybe it's a welcoming sound of of the mass of people of trans here and everything and uh you make it back to the net your boots meet that um slumber slumber queen um your boots make it back uh to uh metal grating that familiar sound that comforting sound of almost being home the sound of that door that slides open Um, I'm sure you're met with um, a warm welcome from Samir and the newest member of your party. Still no word from Malik. Is there anything that Tal wants to do? Oh, there's a lot of things Tal wants to do. (laughs) Um, uh, Take inventory uh okay look at the map i mean yeah yeah all of these things yeah everyone gets everyone gets to look at the map yeah you i know tamir is gonna love it he's gonna have a blast we see you probably delicately unload your sister's items into her trunk still here probably on this ship her home as much as it is yours And you unload her weapons and put them away, waiting for when she comes back to claim them. We see a picturesque moment of three figures, Tal and Tamir, uh, and rather tall woman, beautiful, dark hair and dark skin, looming over the both of you. As the three of you look at this map, the map of a prison, A single X marks one of the cells on this hand-drawn map. And in the corner is a a bit, bits of information, kind of like a map key. Um, There are coordinates to um, a very specific location. And you are given the name of a uh, system. Otakon. The Otakon system. Tal, the Otakon system is at the other side of the third horizon. Of course it is. You're looking at probably a minimum, just looking at the map of 
somewhere between four to six jumps minimum to get there. Um, possibly upwards of a month travel time. Four to six I hope jumps. appreciates this. And more importantly, the Otakon system sits in what's known as a dangerous zone or a danger area, which is a, it's under. We're going uh, into the danger zone. Yeah, danger zone. Um, yeah, so you're headed into Otakon. Um, let me see if I can give you some more information about Otakon. Um, well, I thought I would. Um, so, um, there's a couple things here. There's a reason it's known as the danger area or the danger zone. Um, Otakon is, um, there's a large battle that happened at Otakon. Um, there's um, there's a, a section of Otakon that is used as a ship cemetery, meaning retired vessels and ships and parts and things that are not needed are shipped in mass and dropped. So there is literally a ship cemetery floating in the middle of the Otakon uh, space. Um, and there is an area known as the Ash Belt inside of the Otakon system that is also well known. Um, let me see if there's anything else for Otakon that um a ship cemetery ash belt and there was another thing i just know it uh, but my brain just it went it went in one side and oh there the was a, a large battle known as the battle of otakon okay uh, um so basically the dangers of otakon um most crews are going to find other routes they don't they try not to go through here um there are many Physical threats like lots of pirates and corsairs or the remains of ancient war machines that were used still float through the space. Um, but navigating here in the system is also difficult. Um, since the war, the star itself that the Otakon system is based off of, the Otakon star, is unstable. Which means that the star itself is in its last system before it consumes it, itself. It explodes. Um, Great. We should hurry. Yeah. Um, see, see, it has um, granted its cooldown considerably and creates a strange gravitational phenomena. Both portals in the system are unstable and require a seasoned captain to be used. Cough, cough. Several inexperienced crews have been left stranded here, unable to read uh, to read their navigation systems. So you know. Um. No, uh, no more failures. Failures. More failures. <laughs> no the more ash failures. Failure is not an option. <laughs> um, the ash belt is in and itself where the prison is located. The ash belt hangs like a dark shroud in the emptiness between the portals of Otakon. It consists of the remnants of Matoshu which was the planet, the fourth planet here, that was completely destroyed and exploded during the war. The Ash Belt is a gold mine for scrappers, crews, and adventurers, but also contains a fair share of dangers. We'll save, I'll save that line to not read out loud for spoiling things. Um, so what I'm hearing is that while we're there, we're going to be picking up everything and anything that we can strap to the ship. Sure. Probably not, though, because we got to go fast. Um, <laughs> and I would say it's going to be, it would be your, the newest member of your party, somebody very cultured, very learned, um, without giving too much away about them that tell you that the reason the ash belt is dangerous is not because of the pirates. It's not because it is literally the scrap remnants of ships and of a planet that no longer exists. It is dangerous for a mythical thing known as the Bane of Ashes. The Bane of Ashes is a, mis a mis mystical entity, not a creature not a person, is an entity. And it is whispered among mystics that this entity is able to destroy a ship by breaking it down molecule by molecule. 
Some believe it to be a semi-intelligent war machine that was left behind. Others believe it to be a chaotic cloud of nanites. But nobody really knows the truth. Great. Uh, yes, Lightning Invoker, it is where the final battle took place between the first and the third horizons. That was the Battle of Otakon. And we see this moment as the three of them pour over this map, the Otakon system, the Ash Belt. They gather as much information as possible. A daft attempt to save a friend who they believe is undeserving of the punishment that he himself saw only fitting. And we see the camera once again come out of and down the side of the Defiant, going backwards from how we saw it enter today's episode. Down, seeing the Defiant letters, and starts panning down Coriolis. As it goes farther and farther down, uh, it stops and enters an air vent. The camera weaves through the darkness until, until we hear a faint panting. <sighs> we can see the same set of eyes as they dart about the eyes of a hunter. Jalissa's hair now pulled back in a tight bun off of her shoulders, blood and sweat all over her face. She grips the pike as her only weapon. She waits, and off in the distance, down one of these air vents, we hear the sound of footsteps, not human, but monstrous, shaking and rattling the metal, a growl that follows, and we hear under Delissa's breath, here kitty kitty, here kitty kitty kitty, as she grips down on the pike and raises it, ready to make an attack. And that's where we end tonight's episode. Because we're out of time. And Sal did it. She got the information she needs to save Sewell. I have a question. Uh-huh. Is it actually a cat? Uh, you don't know. It Please! Is it was I need to know if it's a space a, cat. <laughs> a creature. It was decided, described as a creature. Ugh. That's the real cliffhanger. Will Jalissa make it back? We don't know. No, no. If, if it's actually a cat. If it's actually a cat or not. I just want to know if it's a cat. That's it. I mean, I'm sure Jalissa, that, that is also a question I want answered, but is it a cat? That's what's really going to bother me. <laughs> Guess we'll have to find out. Guess we'll have to find out. Well, we got a little sisterly, little sister sister bonding, little Jalissa Tao, quip sassy sister time. Quip sassy sister time. I, I mean, really like it. Okay, I'll. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> I had to think about it for a second, but it's good. Um. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, I Mike said that we have to do the outros ourselves, so tell everybody who you are, oh. Eris, and where we can find you. Hi, I'm Eris Savad. I make stuff, and I play games, and I talk shit. Um, you can find the things that I make at erisavad.com. Um, you can find a bunch of other shit on that website, too. It's great. Um, <laughs> you can catch me most Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, really whenever we feel like it at 9 a.m. Eastern time on Nomadic's channel where we're waking up, talking shit. Yep. Yeah. Hashtag blame Mike. Um, <laughs> blame and Mike. Waking up, talking shit with Gnome Brew. Um, 8 p.m. This Monday is the finale of Clockwork Vines, which is a Ooh. Call of Cthulhu game, which has been mashed with another game that my brain isn't providing the name of right now. Um, GM'd by Honey, Honey and Dice. And um, nice. we're, we've got the finale. It's been an absolute pleasure playing with all of, her, all of them. Um, so I can't wait to see what happens. Um, I might blow up a warehouse. 
We'll have to see on I Monday. Say, you guys <laughs> the warehouses. You burned the Look, last warehouse I gave you, so. Um, and if you need more void in your week, because pff, who fucking doesn't, um, you can find me on my channel on at 9 a.m. Eastern on Tuesdays for Captain's Chair, where we right. are watching through seasons one and, and two of Void. Sure. I'm watching with Eris on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, I have wait, space wait, which episode for one we guest. On? Uh, season one, episode four. Four. So is that the one where you all, it's our first full episode. That's the sex suit episode. That's the one aboard uh, the Harabi. Oh, I'll be there on Tuesday, y'all. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Actually, no, I, I said Mike has to come with us because it's all. <laughs> it's all. Okay, but, so here's the thing. That's going to be a hmm. really, okay. Thinking back, thinking back on. Oh, no, the Mike arch. can't do it. Fine, fine, fine. We'll just have to. Okay, new doctor. Mike Dot, has to go to the doctor. Dot dot will dot will be with me. I mean, I'm that's not a disappointing thing to be honest. Mike. We can still blame Mike. We can blame Mike even harder because he won't be there to defend so himself. Much harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what good friends say. Um, um, yeah. so four four is the episode where we get a lot of where I as a GM was like, well, fuck it. They have seeded all of these problems, and I'm just gonna go with so it. So when when we um when we left off on episode three, Tal had just crushed all of the um, boxes with corpses in them with her that landing. So that's where we ended up last perfect. episode, this, last we, Tuesday. We need Lamar this episode too, because you guys have all that radiation. This will be a good one. I'll be there Tuesday. This will be fun. Yep. And uh, yeah. So yeah. Because that was, I bet there's, I bet if we watch really closely, there's a moment on Dot's face when mike or malik is like yeah i'm gonna use soul's dad's name i bet they're now we'll be able you, to see a that, big old that light eye bulb. the eyebrows went whoop <laughs> yeah, i was like huh, idea yeah um for <laughs> oh, sure yeah. uh so yeah um cool well i'm dot uh y'all yeah, i'm little red dot you can find me online i've got so much going on right now um i've launched a new podcast so if you like vampire the masquerade go check out our new podcast stitch of fate it's great gnome is editing it and it sounds amazing we're only out for episode two uh, but you can catch us every friday um on your podcast listening app of choice um so go get us we're called stitch of fate or you can find us at pod by night um let's see next week is uh dragon con goes virtual you can check me out over on dragon cons like streaming stuff all across their stuff i'm going to be interviewing people and playing in some games and being a, a part of that process and then um right now i'm um i'm uh glad to call myself as part of the, the gm group for magpie games so if you want to game with me but you don't want to do it live i run games for magpie so i'm currently running mask um i re have really really enjoyed that so you can check that out um what else am i doing i'm waiting i'm waiting to hear back about this grant y'all um and before i can tell you like what the dot lot is going to look like come like september october november december but um until then we got we got some things happening here. Um, I keep hearing that I'm supposed to be doing a one shot with Joey for his uh, expanse campaign. We'll we'll get to that later. Yes, yes, says Gnome. Uh, Gnome says yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll get to that later. But there'll be some other things coming down the pipeline. Um, but but you can check me out there. And more importantly. If you want more of this, you can help us make that a reality. We're excited to be bringing season three come January, but if you want more of all the crazy shenanigans that we're up to and you want to get more of it, um, we're very, very close to hitting like our third or fourth stretch goal, uh, which assures that we can release this. No, yes, release it as a podcast. So we have, we definitely are going to get updated character art. We're definitely moving to three hour sessions. Um, no, 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 no. Get that backwards. Help me. Three hour sessions is the last goal. <laughs> oh, we're so working we've, for three we've hour got, sessions. hold on. We've got season three. We've got season three with new art. We've got season three with a cosplay video. Yeah. We are currently working on, and we might have hit, I'm not sure. I'm not watching it, but we're looking for uh, the 
third, which is going to be having Gnome edit our, our shit into a really high quality podcast, podcast from the start right. when we like will record in Zoom, but also in another place so that they get like clean stuff and you know, you know it'll be great. And then if we hit our last goal, then we will do three hour long sessions, which is essentially you get what's because there's two hour long sessions. Yeah, usually we do them. about two So you hours, get a yeah. whole six sessions more of content. Content, basically. Because yeah. let it's, me, let it's me 12 check, sessions. Yeah. So that's 12 Correct. extra hours, which is, so oh, sorry, we that's three extra sessions worth of content. Yep. So we are, we're almost there. there. Thanks to your, everybody's kindness tonight with the corruption bars. Uh, we're at 90% of the, the, the goal to make our podcast. So we're very, very close. We're almost there to have that sweet podcast. And then after that, so we'll be doing one of these a month leading up to the third season. So uh, for all of you in January, we know it's a, a long way away. We're also join jonesing to go back to space. So we decided these little one shots would be fun. I can officially announce that next month will be our Malik one shot and it will be happening September 18th, Friday, September 18th. Put it on your calendar. Um, we're going to be finding out right here why Malik has been missing and what possibly could Malik have been up to. I guess we'll have to find out and see uh, the next time that we're we're gathered here so put it on your calendars gang i'm very very excited we all know what I, i'm sure you can guess what malik's been busy doing um but yeah i guess we'll see how successful he is and what trouble he gets into when he's all by himself um yeah, yeah. um Cool. I think that's all that I've got. Don't forget to check out the other shows here on Unmade Gaming, of course. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 8 p.m. There are all kinds of amazing shows that run on the channel. I believe there's also YouTube, where if you've been missing the shows, you can go get caught up. If you want to get caught up on this, like Eris said, you can watch it with us every Tuesday. We're only four episodes in. We're not that far. It's not too, yeah. we're not too deep down the, the, the space rabbit hole yet. Um, and let's let's be honest, if you're going to watch Captain's Chair, you probably want to watch the episode before because I'm also commentating over it. And yes, so there's we're spoilers. Yeah. We're, we're talking all over the audio. You can't hear yeah. what's going on half the yeah. time. Last episode, we started talking about something completely not related to Void <laughs> at all. It's it happens. Really, we're just um, hanging out watching the show and bullshitting in the morning. Let's yep. be honest. <laughs> yeah, and and uh as oh thanks, Necrotic. It looks like we've got an updated oh. space countdown as well in the Discord where we hang out and chat more space. So come chat space. Hey, what? Great. That being said, and now that Dot can breathe again, uh yeah, everything they said is completely correct. Uh if you guys like what we do here, uh support us on Patreon. Uh if you sign up now, there is a 10% discount, all that stuff. Check out the YouTube, join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, links for that stuff all down below. Uh we are at 90%. I've already added the corruption bar to the coffee. Um, and so we are 90% towards our goal of podcast. Uh so help us hit that goal. Uh hopefully before next month. Um, and so that way we can focus on our three hour episodes in the remaining one shots, uh, and feel free to spam that coffee link everywhere, far and wide on any social yep. media platform. Uh, that being said, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you, Dot and Aris for putting on an amazing show. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's going to be it from us. We will see you guys next week for more, uh, RPG shenanigans. So from all of us to you guys, bye bye <laughs>